Hello, my name is Dick Roberts. I am a professional photographer, videographer, metal artist, laser artist, and I make cutting boards out of exotic wood. I earned my living for over 40 years as a professional photographer and own studios up north before moving to Florida in January of 1987. When I moved to Florida, I decided I no longer wanted a storefront or have any employees. So I rented an office and became a broker of photography specializing in on-location weddings and events. I also did commercial videos. The person I brokered for was myself, of course. My wife and I worked together as a team and had a good business that kept us very busy for a lot of years. Then a number of years ago, we decided to retire and move into a retirement village of 360 homes. This was a private village and we all owned our land that our home set on. Our home and land is on a beautiful lake. Since I was never one to just sit and do nothing, I decided to buy a CNC plasma cutting machine and start doing metal art. After a few years of doing that, I sold my metal shop and bought a laser machine and started doing laser art. After exploring several ways of making different things, I found something that became very popular. I bought some clip art of children and started making children's night lights. Most of the people who lived in our 55 and older community were retired and had grandchildren. When they saw the laser engraved children's lights, they were impressed and wanted to buy them to give to their grandchildren. I designed all of my artwork in Corel Draw and then engraved and cut the sign out of quarter inch acrylic with my laser machine. One thing I will point out at this time is that you should always use cast acrylic when doing any engraving. Here is a sample of why I say this. The cast will show up the engraving much better than the extruded. Engraving was the easy part. The hard part was when I tried to make a base for my signs. I first started looking on the web and the only thing I could find was on Amazon.com and they were just too much money for me to use unless I sold my creation at a high price and I wanted to keep my costs down so I could sell them at a lower price. Then I discovered a way to buy them from China at a good price. But I would have to order so many up front in order to get the low price. And since I was selling them a few at a time, I didn't want to invest in a lot of inventory. I then came up with an idea that worked out very well for me and started off my business of not only children's night lights other signs as well. Here is how I make my acrylic engraved signs and what has worked for me and that people really do like. I use Corel Draw X3. I use it because it is just something I happen to have and it works just fine with my laser machine. You can use whatever works for your laser machine. I first open up my Corel Draw software and then click on New. This will open the program showing a blank page. I then go to the upper left corner and click on the area where the top and left side numbers come together. Then hold down the left mouse button and drag the lines that will come out to where the top and the left corners of the page come together. This will then place a zero at the top and upper left corner and then I go to the rectangle tool and draw a box the size of the width and height of my acrylic sign I am making. I then take my pick tool and move the box I just made into the middle of the page to work on it. At this time, there will be little squares all around the box. If there aren't, then take the pick tool and click on the box. This is when I go to my shape tool and click on it, and the boxes will turn into one box on each corner. 
Then click on the upper right corner and three of the boxes will disappear. I then hold down my shift key and click on the left top corner and now I have one black box on the top left and one on the top right. Then all you have to do is drag the two boxes toward each other and it will cause the top corners of the box to curve. Adjust however you like for it to look. Now is when you are determining the cut file from the engraving file. The laser by default is set up to engrave everything that is black when downloaded into the laser program. The engraving file is called the raster file and the cut file is the vector file. In order for the machine to know whether it is to cut out the workpiece or engrave, you must change the color from black to some other color and then when you are setting up your machine you need to change the raster and the vector. I usually put my vector file into a yellow outline but since yellow doesn't show up as well I decided to use red just for this video illustration. You can use any color you want and make as many different cutouts as you want in different shapes. Be creative in using your designs. When you download everything into your laser software, you will need to set up the power and the speed of everything that is going to happen. It is a good idea to make a test in order to know that everything is going to work out okay. Be sure that you have everything set up so that the lens on the laser machine is lined up perfectly. It is not good to use a dark color for making the vector cutout file because I have learned the lighter I make the color, the less chance of getting the machine confused. What you have now is a blank slate to create your artwork. Everything inside this cutout file is now ready to accept whatever you have in mind, whether text or drawings or clip art. I will now give you some examples of what I do. Here are a couple I cut out a while back and still have them in my portable hard drive. I just pulled this up to make an example of what my LED lights look like just before going out of Corel Draw and into my laser software by just punching print in Corel Draw. These show how I use the yellow line around for the cutout Victor file. I always set everything up to engrave first and then cut it out last. Another thing I do is always engrave by mirroring the engraving so that it prints like it is looking into a mirror. Then when I put it into the base, I put it so that it can be seen properly. This has always turned out better when I do this. Here is an example of how well this little two-year-old liked her new bedside light. She just kept holding it and saying, mine, mine, mine. I made it for her grandparents because they wanted it made special for her and she just loved it. Like I said before, I just couldn't find anything to use for a base for my acrylic signs. So I decided to make one myself. I first tried to make something out of metal, but that didn't work out so well. And then I thought of making something out of wood. I went to Home Depot and looked in the area where they keep specialty woods and saw something I thought would be perfect. It was a one inch by three inch by eight foot strip of prime pine. I bought several eight foot strips of it and then after deciding what sizes I was going to make my standard size signs 
I set up my miter saw and started cutting out sections in the size I would be using. I decided on making my standard price signs 6, 9, 12, and 20 inches. Anything other than that would be priced as custom design. This way, I could make my bases in advance and have several of them ready when I needed them. If it was for a six inch sign, then I would cut the wood out at nine inches to leave an inch and a half on each end to hold up the acrylic placed into the six inch slot. I would always leave enough on each end to make it stand up on its own. This was the beginning of creating what ended up being the perfect base for my engraved acrylic laser cut out signs. I wanted them to look like a piece of handmade furniture instead of something machine made. My purpose was to make art, not make something like you could get at a big box store or the flea market. Everything I made was handmade with the exception of the LED lighting and the control switches and some of the things I needed to complete what I was making. That was when I started figuring out a way to put everything into the base. In order to make what I had in mind, there would be certain equipment I would need for building the base for my LED strip lights. Since I didn't have a lot of room for large equipment, I went to Sears and bought a small router table that I could use and then set it on a shelf and take it out and use it when I needed it. I also bought a set of router bits. I then bought a powerful router to mount on the table to make the slot and the underneath part to hold the LED strip lighting. Once I got my router all set up, I started rounding the edges of my base and then sanded everything down with my belt sander. I then started cutting in my slots that would hold the acrylic sign as well as insert the LED strip lighting. I had been thinking about how I would hold in my LED lighting once my base was complete and my first idea was to make something out of black quarter inch acrylic. But when I did that I decided it was too thick and really was a waste of material and took much longer to make than I wanted to spend on it. So I put that off for now and continued to cut out my wood. I now had three phases of my base that was coming along just fine. I had the beginning raw wood I started with and then I had the round edges I made with my roundover bit on my router table. And then I had sanded them down and slots cut into the base and ready to have the LED lighting put in. They were now ready to finish by staining them. I then got a wet rag and a bowl of water to rinse out the rag and started cleaning the wood dust off of each piece I had been working on. After I cleaned all of them, my wife started doing some experimenting with different colors of stain to use on them. She decided that she would use a variety of stains to make them all a little different as though they were cut out of different types of wood. My wife was in charge of staining and getting them ready for me to assemble them into the finished product. That was when I discovered something was missing. Everything had been going just fine and then it just didn't seem to look the way I wanted them to look. So I decided to make something to put on top of the wood and then a base plate to hold in the LED strip lighting. Here is how I started working on finding what I wanted. I first made a top that took up too much of the wood and made it look like it was more plastic than wood. So I experimented with that for a while.
and then I found just what I wanted. I went into Corel Draw and drew up the design I wanted for the top and the bottom, and I printed the name of my studio on the bottom plate. I then put the drawing into my laser machine and engraved out the text and cut out the top and bottom of the design for the base. I used 1 8 inch black acrylic. I also cut holes in the bottom and the top with my laser machine so I could put screws into the wood. After I finished cutting out the top and bottom, I then took all the pieces into my shop and used my drill press and countersink bit to countersink the holes so that the screws would go into the wood deep enough to put a felt pad over them to protect the surface that the light would be sitting on. When doing the electrical work of connecting the power to the LED lights, be sure to match the arrows that are marked on each connection. In order to make sure this is done, I decided to heat shrink them together so that they will be connected properly and stay that way on arrival to the customer. This is how the bottom looks after the parts are laid out. Here is the top side view when laid out. Then after the base is plugged in, it will look like this. Then after inserting the acrylic sign that was engraved, it will look like this. It started off just a piece of raw wood and ended up a beautiful wooden base for an acrylic sign that was created with a laser engraving machine. My laser engraver is 12 inches by 20 inches. I buy my clear cast acrylic online and what I buy is 12 inches by 24 inches. So when it comes in, I have to cut off some of it to fit into my laser machine. I keep it as long as I can and the end I cut off is what I use to make tests before engraving a product. Here is how it looks when I am engraving and cutting out a design I did in Corel Draw. The engraving machine turned a piece of plain clear acrylic sheet into a piece of something with meaning that would last forever. <music> 